Last time we spoke, we wondered what the Braves could even do this offseason. Apparently, the answer is a lot. Let's get started. Cole, how you doing? Feeling great. I have locked myself in a dark room for three days and have fed myself nothing but White Sox content, which actually uh, will help me out this episode because... Sounds uh, very unappetizing and unhealthy. It's like going and getting the worst burger at Burger King seven days a week. And then they traded him to the Marlins. And the Marlins knew how to, to market that burger, unfortunately. Actually, they did have a few Jake Burger specials at a guaranteed rate. So Did they? That's the shocking. I'll give them that. I think it was more just like a like an advertisement than a special though. Now that I'm thinking more on it, but yeah, Jake Burger, one of the tastiest burgers you will get in Miami. Anyway, so a lot of trades. Uh, when we talked a few weeks ago, this team looked very different. The Braves had a roster crunch. They actually had more than 40 men on the 40-man roster because of all of the guys on the IL. Now they have 30. So if you're keeping track, they've cut 14 players, I think is the math, in the last two weeks, uh, either released or or traded. The biggest trade, the one that I think we are not as surprised by, but it still kind of hurts, is the uh, the Michael Soroka, Nicky Lopez, Jared Schuster, Braden Shoemake, and Riley Goins, Gowins, for Aaron Bummer. Goins. Gowin, Goins. Uh, on for, like When I first saw this trade drop, my heart sank, because I was kind of bracing myself for the Braves to non-tender Michael Soroka. That deadline was... We're recording on Saturday. That deadline was Friday. The trade happened on Thursday. Um, and if you don't know about non-tendering and all of this, basically when teams call up players, they get like six years of service time. And after the first three years, they have to go through arbitration. But the team can decide to basically release them for nothing if they don't think the arbitration price is worthwhile. The Braves did a lot of that, but also they figured that, that trading... Michael Soroka, who they were going to probably release, and Nicky Lopez, for for some value, was better than getting absolutely no value. I had processed, Cole, the, the Braves moving on from Soroka. I really had. Uh, Friday afternoon, it really hit me. Man, we're not going to see Michael Soroka in a Braves uniform again. And I was like, oh, my God, that really, that hurts. It's tough. Especially, you remember us in June when he made his return start and how excited we were. And we had fairly tempered expectations surrounding it. We knew he wasn't going to be back to his Cy Young form. Unfortunately, Achilles tear for pitchers is just, I don't want to call it a death sentence, but it's incredibly difficult. And the Braves, where they are in their window... Just unfortunately, that don't have time to to wait and see. Now the White Sox are interesting because we do mention Jake Berger. He actually was in a similar place that Michael Soroka was in, and I know he's not with the team anymore. But he actually tore his Achilles twice, the same way that Michael Soroka did. Uh, his, his injuries happened, I think, ten weeks from each other. The timeline was a lot closer, but. You know, this isn't an organization that is, unfortunately, bad, really bad, but at least... In a lot of ways. I mean, you would know best. So many ways, but this is Braves cast. If you want to know my thoughts on the White Sox, check back in later this month. It's going to be scathing. But I'm glad that he's at least going to get a chance to prove himself in the majors. The White Sox are a team that pretty much just have to throw everything they can at the wall and see what sticks. So hopefully he finds his, for lack of a better term, footing while he is in Chicago. It's unfortunate. I mean, this is going to go down as one of the biggest what ifs in, in Braves history, but um, yeah, I mean, again, it was good to get something for him. I don't know if 
the White Sox were – I'm surprised it took that much to get Aaron Bummer. I know he has a few more years of team control, but I, I do wonder if, if Michael Soroka was one of the first pieces added to that trade package or one of the last pieces. But My guess would be for I, – my guess is they called Chicago – and they're like, hey, we like Aaron Bummer. Would you trade Michael Soroka for Aaron Bummer? Or would you take Michael Soroka? And they're like, I mean, we like Mike, but uh, we're going to need some more. And then the conversation kept adding. The one I'm actually the most bummed about in terms of just production in this trade is Nicky Lopez. We are we were the first uh, members of the Braves' Nicky Lopez club. We have not changed our banner yet. I don't have the heart to change it quite yet. Um, so funny that he went from an AL Central bottom feeder and was able to escape for two months. Must have been the best two months of his life. And now he has to go back to an AL Central bottom feeder. I mean, what a what a what a year for Nicky Lopez. What a six months. He's also got he got married either today or yesterday. So <laughs> happy marriage, Nikki. We're still fans. Uh, the invitation uh, is still stands if you want to come on the pod and talk about Braves, even though you're not on the team. We are still in the Nicky Lopez fan club. Uh, you are Tim Anderson's replacement in Chicago. Good luck. I mean, you're a great guy, great defense. Tough team, tough team. Uh, I, I personally don't understand trading him. Like, I know $4 million is $4 million, but now the Braves don't have a backup infielder, like anywhere. I just don't. I, the, it, the the way I, I think of AA is that when he, you know, this this is part of his formula of of building this sustainable contender, and in his mind, he has he, he doesn't make this trade if, if he doesn't know exactly what pieces he's going to put in place. So I trust the process. I I just don't know who in the minors. I mean, that's, that's the only option. We're not signing somebody. I mean, I mean the options in the, like the, the free agent market are like Luis Guillorme, who is slow, can't play defense and can't hit the, he fits the vibe check. Right. But the thing about Nikki was he was, he could play all over the field he had outstanding defense. Nicky Lopez is top three defensive players in all the Major League Baseball. Not just like a bench player, like all of Major League Baseball. And maybe what's brewing actually is Charlie Culberson. He's going to fill two roster spots, relief pitcher, backup infielder. You know, I, I really, I truly believe Charlie Culberson deserves a shot in the bullpen. And I guess... If he's in the bullpen already, you don't need a backup infielder. Yeah, I mean, you, it's it's always a dangerous game relying on all of your infielders playing a full 162. I, the, I, I think AA knows more than anybody. You can't bank on that. But maybe he's thinking, you know what, let's go into the season, and if we need to create depth, we'll create depth. I mean, he got Nicky for Taylor Hearn, so we must think if the Braves absolutely need a longer-term guy, someone out there will give you him for Dylan Dodd or something. Um, the rest of the guys in this trade, the rest of the guys in this trade, we have um, Braden Shoemake. He was never going to get a shot in Atlanta. Uh, he could not hit uh, at the AAA level. He was like 25 26 uh he probably i think he has a decent glove he might have been good nicky lopez insurance but he just wasn't going to get that shot with the braves jared schuster was a guy i'm sure jared is a lovely dude but i could not watch his starts um and the braves had such little respect for jared schuster that he got his number taken away twice so he started the season wearing 45 got sitting down the braves were like oh we're not gonna see Jared again. We'll give Brad Hand his number. And they went, oh shit, we have to call Jared up to make a spot start. We'll just give him Charlie Culberson's number. He makes that spot start, wears number 53, goes down to the minors. Jackson Stevens comes up, takes the number, and then the Braves have to use him again. Like, he... I, I don't 
think numbers merit that much, what uniform number you wear. But it, it is telling when you're on the 40-man roster and your team just constantly gives your number away. Like, he just wasn't that guy. Yeah, and no, definitely, I don't definitely. really know anything about Riley Gowan. Gowans. I, I I don't even know how to pronounce his name, and I, I'm so sorry. He he's 24, and he hasn't played above high A, so there's nothing telling there. Uh, what are your thoughts on Aaron Bummer? So, uh, in my White Sox research, I, I will say Aaron Bummer was not one of the players I focused on. Uh, it, it is nice having that left-handed reliever depth we we didn't really have much uh beyond aj minter for most of the season uh it, it is interesting though the implications of where we feel tyler matzik is in his recovery um it, it seems like he might even be tyler matzik insurance if if in the case that he's just not you know, 2021 levels when he comes I back. I was also thinking Dylan Lee insurance because the Braves yeah, purged yeah, yeah. anyone off with a, a shoulder injury except for Dylan Lee. So it might just be Dylan Lee insurance too. Yeah. So it, it is interesting, the implications of that. Um, I, I feel like we could have gotten just like one more piece from the White Sox. I, I, I just, I know basically we just kind of threw them and this is with all due respect to everybody in the street package we, we did send them couch scraps but i mean i don't know about you man I, there's been times where i've been able to scrounge up some coins from you know couch cushions and you know from the uh what's it called glove compartment on your car and i've been able to get you know like a milkshake and a small fry uh it, it does feel a little bit just the volume of it but again a lot of these are players we're going to non-tender anyway uh, yeah, I, I mean, Soroka I would rather have had that that low A, like second baseman who yeah. has no career home runs, and he's twenty three. But yeah, just a flyer. Just something else. Yeah, just make yeah, it look just, more balanced. Ex- exactly. So, moving. Do you, do you want to move on? Do you have any more thoughts on this on this trade? Uh, I just have like a brief thought on Bummer. Um, he had a six seven nine ERA. That's incredibly high. People are pointing to the fact that his FIP, his fielding independent pitching, was much lower at three, three and a half. That's still not great. Yeah. Um, but also, too, you, you have to think, again, playing for the White Sox in 2023, he, he has shown past success, and he also was an in in an infield with uh tim anderson playing shortstop which uh i I will say from my research was not a good shortstop defensively at all in 2023 so yeah i mean i i don't i trust the process too but in terms of left-handed relievers we're getting an upgrade over brad hand but we're not getting another aj mentor yeah this isn't think think about you know, what was Pierce Johnson's ERA with the Rockies? I know it's a little bit different because Coors Field is a uh, pinball machine and, you, you know, you sell your guaranteed rate is a fairly neutral ballpark. But you ha- you have to think that AA thinks the coaching staff can unlock something. Oh, for sure. The same way they I mean, that's still, this isn't even like Joe Jimenez who had a 4-14 ERA with Detroit and then had a 2 FIP. Like two even FIP, mm-hmm. like it is still much higher, but yeah. again, a middle relieving lefty who is both not AJ Minter because the Braves do need another lefty and is insurance for Dylan Lee and Tyler Matzik. Like I'm not gonna hate it. It does hurt a little bit because we did it, like a few of the players in the deal, but it, it just makes you think what what's the most we could have gone out of that package. Insure, I don't think it would we... be much better. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Um, we're going to breeze through this next one. Uh, Nick Anderson to the Royals for cash. I don't feel anything. I I was a huge Nick Anderson supporter. Uh, He's a notable Rays reliever. Um, what injury did he have? Cause he wasn't shoulder. The the Braves purged anyone with a shoulder injury. Soroka shoulder and whatever gone. Uh, Kyle Wright, who we'll get to in a minute. Shoulder gone. Dylan Lee, I don't know how he survived the shoulder purge, but he he's the only one. 
Anderson had this weird thing where he pitched a game in Tampa Bay uh, in July, and then the Braves went straight to the 60-day IL with him. Um, and he didn't seem very happy by that. He was like, "I, it hurts a little bit, yeah, but I didn't think I'd be out for 60 days. And then he tried working his way back at the end of the season, and the Braves were like, you're not making the postseason roster. I don't know. Yeah. I really, I'd, I'm curious to know if the Braves front office has, ha- has had a philosophy shift on shoulder injuries where now they're like, we we saw what happened with Soroka. We've seen just around baseball, like you're 50, 50 on this and the, the bad end of 50 is horrible. Even the so, uh, Braves pitchers of years past, uh, Brandon Beachy, I'm pretty sure he had shoulder issues. And I mean, he mm-hmm. was, I mean, he was against Cy Young votes in his one season so I think it's a philosophy of not holding on to a uh, you know a beat up Ferrari if if it's just even if it's the, the even if it's a car that was once valued at you know millions of dollars uh, if it's beat up if it's got a bad engine you know if if there's something fundamentally wrong and I know we're talking about people here living breathing people and not cars but. It's just you don't even if the goods were were highly valued at one point, you don't want damaged goods. We've seen teams who have tried to hold on to a player who's just had an injury that unfortunately happens. You you just can't get back from and the Braves are just not holding out any hope for, for those players. Yeah. I, it's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, it, you know, I, I'm so curious of how Soroka is going to pan out. Anderson's going to pan out. Maybe, you know, and even if one of those three guys does pan out and the other two, just their careers are essentially over, I, I would call it, cynically call it a success in, in my book. I mean, I I would love, I think I would love if all of these pitchers succeeded. Like, I would love to see Michael Soroka back in the All-Star game in two years. I'd love to see Kyle Wright repping Kansas City at the All-Star game in two years. Like, I would love for Alex Anthopoulos to look terrible on these trades just because these are, like, they're good pitchers. Soroka and Wright have had, I don't know that much about Anderson's personal life. There have been a few mixed reviews. But with Soroka and Wright, they both have, you know, great reviews from from their peers as as people. I want them to succeed. Um, but I, I agree at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, if if the the likelihood business. of them succeeding is low then there's no point of holding on to them and and the Braves can spend the money elsewhere um I'll go ahead and move on to Kyle Wright's trade though if if we're done talking about Anderson because this is the one I actually dislike the most mm-hmm. um Kyle Wright for fans who don't remember is out for 2024 he will not pitch at all next season um he has a shoulder injury and we've said many times already in this podcast, those are bad injuries. This is his first year in arbitration. It's not like he's ARB2, and then next year he's going to be making you know $10 million, $12 million. Um, he was set to make a million and a half this year, somewhere around there. Uh, he'd probably make three or four million in ARB2 uh, when he's finally ready to pitch. I have no issue with the Braves trading Kyle Wright. Um... But the return, and I really hope I look stupid in like six months, but the return is terrible. Uh, Jackson Jackson Kowar uh, has a career ERA over nine. He's pitched over 80 innings, I believe. I think he's at 80, 80 innings and a third. He's pitched across three MLB seasons. He's 28, I believe. Um, and his FIP is six. So it's not like he's been unlucky in those 80 innings. Uh, I saw something on fan graphs from a few months ago that was like the pitching coach had worked on his stuff and they think that moving him across the mound and, and like pitch mix and blah, blah, blah. He still got lit up in his last three outings. So I am not against Kyle Wright, but he he would have been able to pitch two more seasons for the Braves. And you've basically... Tra- and and uh, Cower only has one option here. So he's not that added flexibility. I do wonder if the fact maybe 
the Braves played their hand too soon, where the fact that they're trading Kyle Wright means that they know something dire. And I know teams have to release medical records um, for all their players when when they're trading them, just due diligence. But um, obviously, with the players' approval and everything, that's what they agreed to in the collective bargaining agreement. Want to make sure we're practicing good HIPAA laws. But um, I, I just do wonder if the fact that the Braves put Kyle Wright on the trading block meant inherently reduce his value if that makes sense a team sees that you know the Braves are calling the Royals about shipping Kyle Wright to them and they're like what is this guy who was an all-star or won 20 games uh, a year ago and you're trading him I wonder if if the Braves tried to get a better return and the Royals called their bluff I can imagine curious about that I, I just, uh, even it's still, um, one of the things I think we'll have time to get to, but the Braves purged their 40 man roster. They are at 30 men right now. If it's about opening spots on the 30, 40 men, uh, and I, I really am wondering what the Braves are doing, then well, go out and trade for that, like that very low floor mid ceiling type of player who is in low a, who doesn't take a 40 man roster spot. And is like, you know, the 20th prospect on the Royals uh, MLB pipeline. Like, not even a good prospect, but Cowers, he's on the 40 man. He's going to take up that spot, and he's not pitched well at the major league level. I'm or curious, shown that though, he can. about this. Since he wasn't going to pitch in 2024, what if you just left him? This might be a dumb question. What if you just left him off the 40 man? I mean, what, what team is going to take him? It, unless I'm well, just I mean, reading. Are you talking about Kyle, right? I, I like. Are we talking about like Rule Five stuff here? Where if he's not, unless I mean, I'm Kyle Wright, unless I'm unfamiliar, would probably just get claimed if the Braves designated him for assignment. Yeah. So, I, I guess, I guess, like, if he passed waivers, and maybe I'm just I'm thinking about this wrong, but, um, I guess it was just nice to get something of a return, even if the fact that we were basically like giving up two years of him was telling of where we thought he was. Oh, for sure. I think it's very telling. And even if you wanted to like get the lowest return possible, I still think you could have gotten something that fit your plan better because the Braves right now don't need 40 man roster spots. We thought they did. And then they went out and released seven players. So Mm -hmm. now they don't. Um, so right taking up a 40 man roster spot wasn't that going to be that big of a deal. And it's not like the Braves are penny pinching unless, you know, they are, which would be shocking to me. Well, they're, uh, they I mean they they've mentioned they are increasing their payroll going into this off season by how much? Right, and they've know. just cut uh like 8 9 million dollars and then Bummer's making like 4 million, so they've cut a cumulative 5 million. And yeah. they purged roster spots. Wright is just I don't I don't understand it. I trust the pro the, at the end of the day, I'm not in the front office. I trust the process. I just think that a guy with Kyle Wright's I mean, he's only had one season of success. Mm-hmm. Maybe we're overrating it that much. His baseball stat page looks hilarious because you have bad year, bad year, bad year, amazing year, bad year. And uh he he I don't take much stock in pitchers wins but 87 and a half percent of his his major league total wins came in 2022. Yep. He has 3 MLB wins outside of that year. Um but then again I just am like, you know, even if you are trading him for pennies on the dollar, you could get someone who's not on the 40 man roster who's going to take up a 40 man roster spot and we'll like I wouldn't be shocked if it's March and Jackson Cower gets designated for assignment like he just is not that kind of guy i don't know i'm confused but it's interesting i i think a lot of us it it reminds me of you know july 2021 when he made the peterson trade there is a full picture here and you know we're, we're judging the the movie of the braves 2023 2024 offseason by the first act and there's still plenty of story left to go. So 
it's interesting how we're going to look back on this in a few months and go like, oh, duh, you know, duh. That or, makes so much or sense Or it falls now. apart and we're left wondering like what was happening. Like realistically, the free agent market is pretty weak aside from one dream candidate and then, you know, three other guys that you're like, oh, we'll take him. Like if the Braves I, and I, the Braves are probably not going to sign multiple guys with Q, Q, uh, QOs qualifying offers. Like I can't yeah. see them signing Aaron Nola and Sonny Gray. Yeah, they, they're yeah. not going to do that. They're not going to lose four draft picks. So, and they don't have a. They've released any minor assets on the forty man. So and they don't have a great farm system. So they're not going to trade for Juan Soto unless they trade more assets off the yeah. forty. Yeah, I mean, roster. you know, the, the Braves' stated goal this offseason was to acquire pitching and pitching depth. So you do wonder if. You know the trades to uh, for Wright, Soroka, guys that are either not going to be effective next year or are not going to pitch next year, for a guy that will give us. You know, it might not be the flashiest signing. I mean, who knows? Maybe we do go for Nola and then take a flyer on you know a a Seth Lugo or even a Michael Walker or. I was going to name one more Padres starter who's a free agent, but um, does Blake's he wear no. number four? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> so that that does seem like the goal in my mind, just kind of cutting bait with guys that we just don't really see in our plans for a free agent that we feel like we can get a good deal on, and then also too thinking about next season, and uh, you know, it's I I don't know who's going to be on the market in terms of starting pitching next off season, but we're probably not going to resign or extend Max Freed. And that is in the back of the front office's mind going into this. What if season. this, this penny pinching this off season, I, and I want to go ahead and just throw it out there. Part of my delusional brain is just like, what if they signed Otani? It, it's not happening until it does, but it's not happening. Yeah. But what if the Braves have been penny pinching so they can go to Max Freed and say, hey, we know you want market value. We'll give you market value. You're an excellent pitcher. You've carried this team for four, four seasons now, three seasons, four, four seasons now. Uh, we'll give you that market appropriate value with seven years, 250 million. What if they, I Possibly. mean, what if they do that? That's a market. I mean, that's that, paying market price for Freed. I I just, what's the most we've paid for a starting pitcher, and a and a contract? I, I mean, mean, it's Charlie. Charlie's the most we've ever paid. Yeah. So no, I just mean in total value, not just AAV. There's, I, would it be Striders? Is it Strider? It might be Striders. I mean, who who else have we signed to a long term, under Alex? What other pitchers have we signed to a long-term con? Nobody. I mean, none. Yeah. So I I just don't see them giving that much volume. I know it's Max Freed, but look, they've, I mean, what's the they've difference shown between, sentimentality you know, does not mean anything unless you sign a long-term Clearly, as we've seen this week. Before you hit arbitration. But what's the difference, in your opinion, signing Aaron Nola for five years versus Max Freed for seven. Because I'd rather have Max Freed for seven at market value than Aaron yeah. Nola at five for market value. That's fair. That's fair. And honestly, yeah, I think I'd rather have Max Freed uh, lower AAV possibly for extending it. I just, you, this team is all about making a sustain, sustainable contender. And I just don't see Max Freed really living up to his value this last three years of his contract, unfortunately, especially with some of the injury scares he had this year. It's, uh, it's, it's tough. And again, I think, you know, if Freed signed a contract with the Braves 2019, that pretty much bought as arbitration added on another two, three years under market value. Then, you know, we're talking here. Um, obviously Max Freed is the team's, uh, MLBPA representative would not <laughs> agree to that contract, but 
it's uh, I, I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see him signing the team-friendly extension. That, that's just not going to happen. No, no, but no, no, no. I think I think there is a world in which the Braves do, uh, especially if they're going to go after free agents this offseason, and they, they're going to have to. They, they have seven or eight roster spots that have to be taken up. Yeah. Like, they're not going to go into spring training with 35 men on the 40 man. That's just not yep. going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. When we talk in two weeks, we're probably going to be like, wow, that's crazy. I can't believe they did that trade. Um, but yeah, um, I think we have what, like five minutes left? About eight minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go briefly over these uh, non-tenders and then we'll set up some kind of thing. Uh, Luke Williams, Penn Murphy... Angel Perdomo, Chad, Chadwick Trump, Colby Allard, Yanni Chirinos, and uh, Michael Tonkin are no longer on the Braves' 40 man. Do you feel anything for any of those names I just mentioned? Colby Allard is going to be a Brave in three years. Mark my words. He just can't quit us. We can't quit him. Uh, Yanni Chirinos, uh, we, we were never huge Yanni Chirinos guys. So, uh, you know what? Thank you for your service. Hope you, you reminded me of Tommy Malone. More success on another team. Um, Penn Murphy, not familiar with your game. Perdomo, not familiar with the game. Michael Tonkin, that sucks. He was a feel good story. He hadn't pitched in the major league since like 2018 or 2016. It, it was a while. Something he, like that. It had been it'd been like half a decade. Yeah. And he was actually really good as a, a long man, sort of like a, a Josh Tomlin type. He just fell apart at the end of the season. Uh, Lucas Williams, you know, it, it was fun watching you run the bases that one time. <laughs> Don't really feel anything. You got and then out. make the Braves great again. Chadwick Trump, that feels like an end of an era. Do, do you have anybody that you have any strong feelings towards? Trump, I'm a little bit sad about. He seemed like the perfect, you know, stash and triple A catcher. He might have been out of options. That might be the thing. Yeah. Um, but when he got caught up, he loved the vibes. So he seemed he seemed like a cool dude. Uh, same. I, f- I feel the same about Tonkin. You know, he, he had a great start. He was the Braves' go-to in emergencies. He was uh terrible at the end of the stretch, and I think you know, it was a time to maybe move on. Penn Murphy, I just don't understand why the Braves inv- even bothered claiming him off waivers four days ago. They claimed him off waivers. Oh four really? Days oh ago. wow. <laughs> <laughs> They claimed him off waivers, designated Chirinos for assignment, just, and then just non-tendered Murphy three days later. I don't I don't get the point of that. Um, they like claimed him off of waivers, like hit him up, see if he passed the vibe check. He did not pass the vibe check. And they were like, you know what? Not worth our time. Nope. I could see, you know, two of these guys being back on minor league deals in spring training. But otherwise, man, business is a, baseball's a tough business. It, it really is. It <laughs> One really day is. you're celebrating division championships with the best team in baseball, and and the next minute you're being cut loose because your team doesn't want to pay you a million dollars. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Brent Rooker, the designated hitter, left fielder for the Oakland Athletics. He's a uh, future avid, brave, avid maybe avid Twitter guy, and he was talking about how you know people ask him how long you're going to be with the team for, and he's like. You know, I could be with the team for the next three years. I could be cut tomorrow. That's just the way it goes with arbitration and tendering contracts. Um, you know, one of the most notable cases was Cody Bellinger, who won an MVP in his 2019 season, which pretty much just shot his arbitration value up, even though he was not worth, to the Dodgers, was not worth what they were paying him, and they non-tendered him. So it's uh, it's it's crazy business, uh, but... That's just that's just the game. That's just the game. That's what we do to win. Yeah, I mean, this off season we went from thinking it's going to be really boring two weeks ago to now we we have no idea what's going on, it's, and that that is the business of baseball. Again, if we're going back to the movie comparison, it, it's like the, and I'm gonna call it, it's like the villain doing all the stuff in the background you know setting these pieces together and you're like what is this all leading to like what's going to be the twist it it's uh it's going to be a fun ride it might not be the flashiest thing ever and and i don't want to set previous fans up 
being like, oh, yeah, this is totally – we're totally getting Otani. You know, we cut $5 million off the payroll. That's, that's how much – We're about we, to spend just, $500 million, but that, that 1% that we cut took. is going to take that's it. All it took to get him. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to get your hopes up or anything, but it, it is going to be interesting if there is what, – what this is all leading to. Um, and it could be just signing a bunch of depth and, you know, taking flyers on guys like Seth Lugo and, and seeing if, you know, we can use that 3,200 uh, RPM curveball and make him a Cy Young candidate. Or, you know, we make a surprise and go after Yamamoto or, you know, not trade for Juan Soto, unfortunately. That, that's not happening. We, we can both you never know. pretty much agree you on never that. Know. Uh, do you could. have any uh, final thoughts before we uh, wrap up? Yeah, Alex and Vopolis, now you have 10 open 40-man roster spots. Please sign Jesse Chavez. Mm. That is, that's, give him that guaranteed. Making him go through all that shit the past three years. Having him be on a minor league deal as a 39-year-old. Just give him the guaranteed contract. Yeah. If he's bad, place him on the 68-day IL. Everybody's going to believe that a 40-year-old 40, 40 man, man is going to have some injury issues. Hip. He just yeah, needs one, to be on this team. One who broke his leg last year. Make him our third base coach. We're we're in the market now. We're we're that's we, that's gonna be. Oh yeah, I mean, we have two minutes. We don't have time, but the the Braves uh, are in need of two coaches because one Ron Washington went to Los Angeles, the the bad team in L.A., and he took Ey. He took Ey with him. Yep. And I'm very sad about that. I I think Ozzy Albies especially had some. Some hard times he needed to process with both of them leaving. And, yeah. you know, Braves fans do too. That's, yeah, I have no idea who's going to take those spots either. That's, like, this offseason another... has gone from, like, prepared to be bored to what is happening. It's going to be I a have no idea. Every day. Anyway, for uh, Braves Cast, this is Cole. Uh, check me out. No more fielders, YouTube, Twitter, um, maybe Spotify one day. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I'm Mitchell. Check me out on House That Hank Built. If you want to watch a weird documentary mini doc on George Steinbrenner, it's on my YouTube channel. What happened to baseball? Uh, could use some views. Uh, and we'll see I you in a few it. weeks or tomorrow. Who knows? Depending. Yeah, we never know. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. bye.